We are recording Coding for Content Session 4. Okay, so um, thank you for coming, both of you. And Ms. Stahls, did you get a chance in the time that we've been apart to look back over some of the things from Session 1 and 2 that you might have questions about? Oh, my gosh, don't be mad at me today. Okay. How, today's goal is to try to look at our content for four or nine weeks, mm -hmm. and let's look at composing a mini challenge, okay. right? Um, and I know you've written a mini challenge before. Yeah. Have you had a chance to write one before, Ms. Kessler? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll look at that today. And the goal is for me, once I see where you want to go content-wise, which is great because you're both in grade level, mm -hmm. um, you can work on that together. But we can then decide, like, how would coding be a part of that rubric so that what we're doing here, we have evidence of that in your kids' products. Um, and you not having look back over session one and two, right. that won't be a big hindrance. As long as you're willing to go back and look at that when you run into a roadblock or okay. go to Ms. Kessler or come to me, okay, because it, it can be discouraging. I mean, with coding, like I said in the very beginning, it's something you are going to fail at. Like, right. you're going to mess it up and you just have to keep retrying. I mean, I even still have this on the board from last time because I can't get it to work. And I'm, I want to talk with her to try to figure out how to make those healthy sales healthy, you spread that. So um, since you two are same grade level, um, take some time and just look over what you're doing for nine weeks. And I'm going to take maybe four or five minutes. If you, and if you need less, then that's fine. Um, think about what you could actually code to create a product with or to supplement a mini challenge that you'll create. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll talk again at about 340. So this notes some like um, I did this one for little bits. Mm -hmm. uh, have you used little bits before? Yeah. Okay. So what kind of components, just general, do you think we would use on a rubric for coding? Yeah. I was thinking of some ideas like since we're doing Snap mm -hmm. and there are all these different categories, yeah. maybe have a minimum number of categories that the students should include, mm -hmm. like uh, controls, or maybe I have to have a variable in one mm -hmm. case you know, in the code. Um, I also think that there needs to be a simplicity of the code, mm -hmm. um, because if they're drawing it out, then you have more likely, you're more likely to have an issue. Okay. So I think the more advanced that they get, um, the more the, the simpler the code should be. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. even though they're adding and loops and variables and different constraints to it, I think a criteria of having that simplicity would show their advancement or their success okay. with writing it. Yeah, because really, uh, instead of having the same loop repeated over and over, we need to show them the forever iterations, right. nesting within other loops mm -hmm. and such like that. Okay. Right. Um, and bugs. I think there will be bugs, but depending on what they decide, you know, if it's multiple <coughs> students creating code separately right. to put together, then there might be a standard uh, margin of error, like maybe mm -hmm. for sixth grade, three or less bugs right. in mm -hmm. the code. And it's not just, and I think to that too, there would need, found. there would need to be an, I don't want to say an expert, but maybe an expert, like um, if the teachers needed help reading the code, because you can provide the students the ability to code it. But reading the code, even though the computer may show a bug, there may not actually be a bug in their code. Yes. It may be just a physical bug with the internet or something like that. So there would need to be some type of, like, just a, the person who's grading needs to make sure that or that criteria needs to make sure that it states that it's a, code, a bug within the code. Code, okay. Well, and when we put it into Scratch, it should show us the final product and mm -hmm. the code itself. Yeah. So then that way, from the teacher's side of it, when they grade... It should look fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if they decide not to use Scratch, then we can go through... Manually. Just, you can just have them do as an XML file mm -hmm. and download and that one. Code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the mini challenges, they'll probably do groups of like four or so. Yeah. And... Um, well, I did two just for pair coding. Yes. Um, but, I mean, I guess... Well, what we could look at, depending on what I decide to do, is because oh, I was thinking of right. products that are combined together, so like uh, two pair, right. you know, right. look at it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe 
a group of four, but two are each are writing the code, mm -hmm. and then they had to sit together and try to create the same product mm -hmm. and look at the differences in the code they made mm -hmm. to see which one's more efficient because that gives them two options of what to submit. That's right, and what to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that way too, they both can take the lead and and kind of determining like where what is what is efficient and what's not. Mm -hmm. um, it gives them a little bit of ownership of both. Uh, their their group's work. But then it, it could also be a problem because you've got one group of students who may be more successful than the other group of students, but their code is not necessarily wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but so there needs to be a way for them to explain that efficiency versus the length. So I don't know how, you know, you could word that into, that's more of a teacher kind of aspect. Yeah. I think my thoughts on it are whatever they come up with, we really just try to implement it in one group. Mm -hmm. Because trying to do two groups, you can have more possible absences. Mm -hmm. If they're not on the same track, you might be frazzled. So I think just one class, mm -hmm. go for that through starting as close as we can this semester, maybe kick off mid to late February mm -hmm. with just basics of coding. And mm -hmm. provide them with glossaries and stuff because right. I'm planning to have one printed up for each group mm -hmm. that they have. Right. And then I'll stay with the teacher. Of course, they can mm -hmm. you know, pass them back out and get them every day. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I think in the beginning, the way I would look at it would be your uh, almost like a uh, KWL chart. You mm -hmm. know, what we already know now. Um, and then build almost like look up vocabulary words and identify the categories, what mm -hmm. falls within that category, right. what are the constraints of it, and then. Uh, some of the challenges that we gave them, like the draw the house, mm -hmm. um, I think it would need to be more simple. Like, right. okay, let's make it move from point A to point B, right. and give them that background, mm -hmm. uh, that co uh, grid coordinate, you know. Um, and I've also considered once we were introducing them to the code, I think I told you this before. Mm -hmm. Have the teacher create some of the code, but just leave the blocks where we enter like 100 steps or right. 15 degrees. Leave that blank, mm -hmm. and then have them go in and fill that in to complete and part of that, that challenge. Yeah, so that it's gradual. So they go from, okay, the teacher's done everything for me, mm -hmm. to now I've got a blank slate. Right. And, and that's the challenge. Right. Yeah. Um, I think so, too, that we could probably create just a very basic mini challenge for them where they are working to simplify code yes like already create the code that they need to work with and then have the challenge be that they need to simplify it mm -hmm. and then have the criteria within that that way that can be a standardized kind of mini challenge that participating teachers can get and implement it'll be one that they've already that's already there it has answers mm -hmm. it has good better best answers and then the students can kind of work through that to see where they are and where they can be. Okay. So I don't That's think that would be too difficult no, to I don't think so create. Either. I really don't. All right, ladies, what are you all thinking about for fourth nine weeks? You teach waves. Mm hmm And we already have a mini challenge where they're designing an instrument. Okay. A simple instrument. So we. We talked about different things, but one of the things we talked about was where they record themselves playing the instrument, and then they have to create code somehow to show the wave, sound waves of the of the, whatever they record. So it's like creating like a musical instrument. Okay. But their oh. actual coding would be the the wave of the sound that they make on the instrument they built. Okay. And we could have. I don't know if we can code that. I'm just trying to visualize it. Um. Yeah. Of course you could because. So. What you would work with for that, and jump in if I'm wrong on this, Ms. Nelson, but we would use the pin option, and when you go pin down, like we did when we drew a house, right, um, what we would have to do is to get them to understand the angles at which the wave crests uh, goes up and down, crests and troughs. Um, the pin down feature, we could show that. What you might do is have, say you have some variety on screen, you could have, say, uh, and this might be off from where you're thinking, but say with a guitar. If you just pluck the string of a guitar, you're going to have a lot different wave than if you put tension on a certain fret and pluck again. And so we could show the dissonance in those waves on screen at the same time. Like an interact thing where they click 
maybe something okay shows you the way that and with it. and here's um now how many students work together in your mini challenges or is it separate like no more than four no group. more than four okay so one of the things we were just talking about miss nelson and i is and that we've tried to do in here when we've had a good number of people is have coding partners mm -hmm. have a, a programmer and then or a driver really and a navigator so to speak so we would look at working in even numbers like that with two Here's what you could do. You could have two separate instruments. So let's say the four of us are on a grand challenge. You two would work with the ukulele. We might work with a trombone, right? We program the code that would show the wave that the trombone makes. You two would program the um, ukulele. And then what we would do is one of us would just save our file, send it to the other team, and we would take their code, put it with ours, so that both can appear within the same presentation. That way we've worked separately, then collectively. Um, that wouldn't be much to teach you how to export and save. So just a simple airdrop would solve that. Um, but then what you could do is in the course of that coding, uh, you would want the somewhere on the screen for text to appear and indicate the sound. Or you could even have the other students um, when you code it, let's say we have the ukulele, and you have the word ukulele, the wave for that place. You have trombone, the wave for that place. And then you could make a little game out of it, and you could have just the wave appear, and you have to guess, is this ukulele, is this trombone, right? Or you could have the kid, if you don't like that option, when they're doing the waves, there are certain, um, like which one has a higher or lower frequency. You should make them identify on, in the coding, I am a ukulele. I'm an example of a high frequency. I'm a trombone. I'm an example of a low frequency, if that's the case. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, and we could do that with the uh, pin down feature mm -hmm. for the waves. And we could do that with the sound features for the text on screen. And then we could play with, depending on how deep you want to get into it, uh, we could talk about importing or exporting the backgrounds, and we could even use avatars. We could import a ukulele that's on screen, and that's the one talking to us, mm -hmm. or like you did with the lobster, to have the wave come directly from the instrument. It just depends on what you think you could do with your kids. You know, it might be just real simple with just a wave, or to take it to that level where we're adding images for avatars. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? What are you thinking? I think you go to the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if there's kids that can't handle it, we could break it down for them to the simpler level. Okay. You'd be surprised. Yeah. A lot, a lot of these kids are going to take it and roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So leading up to, that's the final product. Leading up to that, there's going to come quite a bit of you know, background building. And some of the things that we'll need to start with, hopefully by the around this time next month, is start implementing just basic knowledge of the code themselves. And so, like, this notebook, let me get another one for you, Ms. Stoss. These are just basic glossaries, and what I'll do is I'll have some printed up. Um, I strongly suggest that this be for just one class. Mm -hmm. I would not try to do four classes, mm -hmm. because this way of one class is as contained as possible. Mm -hmm. If we get good results, next year you can do what you want. Mm -hmm. um, but... We would provide each group with the glossary so they would begin to understand what the blocks do. Mm -hmm. And we'd look at it as if we're introducing new vocabulary words. And we have to make sure in the beginning we start with the categories. And then we identify what pieces are in the category. It could be something simple like one day as we're talking about the categories and we kind of study over this, mm -hmm. you might actually, we might cut them out in paper and say, okay, now classify. We'll have them all grayed out, you know, black and white classify them into these categories so they begin to see it and the more they see it and touch it and say okay well I could use this for um, as a part of a variable I can use this for uh, spinning on an axis I can use this for moving from one side to another little activities like that something that won't take your entire lesson your time for that day but five ten minutes we have that Wednesday time three weeks a month okay. where we have a good hour and you, extra 
Yes. With one class. And you could do a lot with that then. Okay. And that could be your coding instruction and then your science time they could do the mini challenge and actually yep. work on the yep. project. Okay. And I wonder if you know how Shaw will do prerequisites in Canvas? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could set up something where like you have to master this uh, task block before you can move on to this task block. That way they can sort of self pace themselves. Yeah. I think this is nice. I like this. And so now I don't I haven't really logged in prerequisites in Canvas yet, just because I have three different classes, it's a little separate. Yeah. So um, I like that. I would need to see how you do it to give my input on you know how we would what content we would put from the coding side of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a button. You basically just say that this block has to be completed before this block. Is. Yeah, I've seen it in Jeremy's um, professional inspiration stuff, mm -hmm. but um, I just don't, haven't really implemented it here because. The program I use is a little more self-paced anyway, right. and you can't go from session one to seven. You have to go one, two, yeah. all the way through. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we could do that. And if you have, so that's really three hours a month between, mm -hmm. if we start at the end of February, March, April, May is going to be caught up with testing at the end. But you know, for a mini challenge, something like this could take, I don't know the pace that your kids work, but you know, sometimes I've spent four to five days. I was thinking about a week now. Yeah. And um, and then at the end, one thing that I think is really nice is to have a little showcase. So that final day is really just, hey, you know, like group one is going to present now. Um, the other 15 of you will go around and see group one's codes and just kind of chat with them. You might have one computer with the code opened up, the other computer running the program that they've coded so they can talk and ask questions. So we do it like we do our grand challenge practice mm -hmm. presentations where a couple groups present and the rest. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. kind of that same way, yep. yeah. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is over the next probably week and a half, two weeks until we meet again, coming up with an outline of what we want to do for the coding side of it on those Wednesdays. Okay. Um, then we'll get together on our next session and talk about it and we'll begin to see how can that fit in your schedule on those Wednesdays mm -hmm. and how much time do we have to play with. Because as much, if the more we can do, the more detailed your mini challenge can look. Um, so, like today, what we'd want to do is go ahead and try to start adapting the mini challenge you have in place, mm -hmm. and make it fit what we're talking about now. And then, as we go through the coding process with our kids, we can let it just grow with us. Um, and so, what I'll do is, if you don't mind, uh, I'll let y'all work on it today. Mm -hmm. And um, I was planning to be here till like 4:30. Um, if you don't need that time, that's fine. But I want you to work on it. Get as much done as you can on that adapted mini challenge today. And then if you'll send it to me and I can look at everything, mm -hmm. then I'll just start to generate some ideas of what are the coding components and how are they going to be met or not met. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, look, if y'all, um, I'm just going to kind of be standing around doing our ideas with Ms. Nelson. If you need anything, let me know. The flashcards, yeah. yeah. Especially if we both open it up and like you take that group and that group and then I take this group and that way we're not in the train. A million things. Yeah. I will just divide up the colors. Okay. Um, how much do we want to incorporate like the parts of the wave? Let's see what exactly right. we need to know. I've always taught like compression, rarefaction. and amplitude, which I wave behavior. Which I'm thinking of it as more than for teachers. Pitch and roughness. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be nice, you know, when I'm just out of somebody's career, I'm interested in just hitching it up there, and I can support you, kind of do well for me. But I think last time the feedback, let me get it real quick. Because there was a 
this is feedback that we should not file. Okay. Um, compare sound waves to light waves. Energy will cause materials to vibrate. These vibrations are carried as waves and transfer energy. Identify the basic characteristics of a transverse. Here it is. Identify the basic characteristics of a longitudinal compressional wave. Amplitude or fraction. Okay, compression. Yeah. So they can talk about, or their, their sprite could talk about these things as it plays the sound. Like, has, like, like it has a high pitch, it has uh, its frequency. Vocabulary. vocabulary. Yeah, mm -hmm. like we'll have to have a list of things they have to include yeah. when they talk about their waves. And like on one wave, they might talk about one of them, and on the next wave, they'll talk about something else. Yeah. It doesn't have to be every wave, all, all characteristics. Yes. Okay, so if we... This goes well, make sure that's make all or many times. Coding. Are you okay? I like it. Or incorporate it in somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are we going to still have them create their instrument, or do we just want the other team to do that part and we'll do, they'll just pick yeah. two instruments or however many instruments? Yeah, I feel like the coding itself will take a a while. week yeah. yeah so we'll we'll do we'll base it basically off of that but instead of creating their instrument they'll have to pick and maybe we'll give them criteria like one has to be like he was saying like a high and one has to be a low mm -hmm. or, so that they can show the difference in the waves and the sound right so we're really uh having we're just we'll have two versions of the same mm -hmm. so the other three classes will do that one mm -hmm. and then the one class will do yeah the coded one yep what core are you doing? I, think I, I wanted to try and do it with one of my non-STEM classes to give them something because they right. create or to, um, to kind of I know it'd be easier anyway, probably with this where the teachers can immediately I've had my I have one of my course that's been doing an hour of code like during this time anyway. Um, I don't know how to do with this. Maybe a like during to implement May, I'll have my have fourth core because that's what we're supposed to do. Because we're supposed to rotate them, but that's a STEM class. So I don't know. Do you think it'd be too much to do we might all of this and a grand challenge? Although they'll be done their grand challenge in May. That's true. We present in April, right? That's true, and it might be beneficial to do it with kids that not that are on step our first time. Yeah. yeah once we can mm -hmm. figure out how to support them a little bit better. Open it up next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe my fourth core then. Your fourth core stem too. Mm -hmm. That would just mean that this, as soon as we implement, like when he's going to help us implement, we'd have to talk to the team and whoever has fourth core, we'd have to switch with them. So that you have your fourth core starting earlier. Because mm -hmm. we weren't supposed to start getting them until the fourth nine weeks. What do you mean by that? I don't know if you guys have done it, but like yeah. first nine weeks I had my homeroom, second nine weeks I had my second core, third nine weeks I had my third core. Right now. For, 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 for that Wednesday time, that event time. Do you guys just keep your homeroom? We do it like PBIS. We do it too, but not the whole hour and a half. We've been here the whole time. <laughs> We have not. We do it the last 30 minutes, so we have that first hour. Mm -hmm. So who do you have for PBIS? Oh, so you, well, see, then you might have to ask your team to switch it up a little because otherwise those kids would miss all of PBIS yep. to do your lessons. Yeah. Yeah, we do the first hour because it's PGC, too, mm -hmm. which would be a downside. You'll have to look at, too, which group has a lot of PGC kids come out of it. Because yeah. they're going to miss those lessons leading up to the challenge. But we could also pair them with strong people. If we find strong people, pair them with the kids that didn't get to do it. Yeah. But yeah, you might have to talk to your team and see if the first hour everyone can take a room and then the last 30 minutes. Or what, what if we create some type of like really basic template where they can select one of those two things and while they go over to play with it, they can try to implement it into their curriculum. That way, almost immediately. Where's my drive? 
Okay, that's good because that's one thing that Shaw was asking because we've got like this, I use this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but they need something tangible that they yeah, can take like that. Yeah, so like the coding would be in the that station, coding would be secondary. Okay, mm -hmm. here's equipment. Mm -hmm. How can you use it in your curriculum? Right. Because once we do that, then we can begin learning teaching you how to code. To use it right. Yeah. Like the Lego Mindstorms. Um, have you restarted lately? Maybe probably right not, and by probably I mean definitely. That's what that is. That's me. Service energy. Sounds right. Um, um, but she's got some of the high school. Teachers. PPC. Okay. And we've got the ones I've got. So middle and high school teachers will be able to use those, and mm -hmm. they a wide variety of configurations and missions already laid out. Right. But you can incorporate it anyway. All oh, my classes have about the same amount of kids out of them. Yes. One, two, three. Yes. So maybe eight, eight, nine, eight, ten, eight, eleven. My fourth quarter loses eleven kids. Time for them to use that way. They're not going to use. They don't have to worry about the coding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My fourth quarter loses eleven kids. Time for them to use that way. They're not going to use. They don't have to worry about the coding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My fourth quarter loses eleven kids. Time for them to use that way. They're not going to use. They don't have to worry about the coding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that would be something we would have to that's what, that was the figure out. And that's one thing that um, My second quarter looks pretty good. And that's, <coughs> that's honestly who I was thinking about I doing it with. Okay. Um, are they STEM or not? They're STEM. Is not necessarily my other one choice would be like my first four. Mm -hmm. Show teachers that are in the social studies classroom. So can you modify like the way I know it's eight because that kid's not in there anymore. After I did it, Mr. Shaw, he was originally telling me he's like, I found this lesson. Mm, that kid's not mine. <laughs> Western expansion. Yeah, right. this so kid. But, right. Okay, well, we don't need mine because we're chariots. Right. Just modify it. Modify it. Right. Right. Same concept. Of course, it's full. Um, but then. I'm not allowed to edit it. She's not mine. He's not mine. He's moved. So I have Addison. That goes right into the website. And then. All right, well, then the next group is not going to say, well, they did waves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a good six. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you checked yours? Um, because now with the change, <coughs> excuse me. Of course, the people who are interested for the lift today, but I was going to, if they were on board, so they were going to be next year, and they were to suggest something that they feel like they can do. You're right, this is wrong. That'll be out. Mm -hmm. I might have to do them. That was fun. That was not overwhelming. Oh, with the pieces? Yes. <laughs> Brandon is. Yeah, Matthew's my homeroom. Just because there's only six kids. Yeah. I wish I could get big pieces over there. I'll leave them out for a while. And the certain areas. This is working out well, I think, because. The goal was to start in a circle. Mm -hmm. Use the code, get it through, collect all the chips, and get to the end in the least number of steps. Okay. Looking for efficient code. Gave them a code back. And they had to go through and solve using the code to scroll down here. Mm -hmm. Three that I always talk about are my kids. Kids roll. No experience coding. Jones code teacher. Kessler. 
20, 22, 23. They all solve here correctly. You just see the efficiency. Right. And what it was, I think, primarily was this. He didn't input any data. So I was thinking about, like, okay, this block should be put in one step at a time. Yeah, so that's how it comes about. And then you have the option to yeah. use your left. And what I told them about before mm -hmm. was because mm -hmm. these can be confusing. You know, when we turn on those trees, typically it shouldn't be clockwise. <coughs> okay, no it. It <laughs> Do we want to? Yeah. So that one we're not going to so worry about so much other than. We just need the template then, right? Yes. Schemes are different. Some are right. Um, some of them didn't start or stop. You know, so they couldn't work. What I had them do was they wrote their code. And they switched mm -hmm. off the slides. Mm -hmm. And they had to follow the path. Right. And it's cool because, like, Mary did, mm -hmm. was, it just, I think it was Jones, she just stood there for a few minutes. Okay. She was like, I didn't like, work, she's like, I asked her. Yeah. Yeah. So, what? Um, she's from the convention stand. We just need to get it in the morning. Do you have so, a So, what I'll say is, we could do something like that in yeah. lieu of okay. I would bring um, maybe swim. Yeah. That would be, um, yeah, that's true. Cause yeah, you need because you in the morning. Well, I use it a lot more with my kids, yeah. just because I'm trying to get them okay. in order to code with the machines. That excitement aspect, you want them to be engaged yes. with it. Yes, because, I mean, this year one for me doing code. So mm -hmm. once I'm getting them into Swift, right. then, okay, now let's use Snap, which is not Templates. quite as exciting. But we can create more with it. Right, 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 right. You know, and then I also, in the first semester I did Snap mm -hmm. and Swift, but now I'm not doing Snap in class because when they implement it, I want to do Different. Yeah, because like I have kids from Jones's clients, and they come in and they hate her. They like her, hate her clients. But they tell me this seems so much easier than what we were doing in Miss Jones's class. Like yeah. they're like, I get this. Here it is. But yeah, see, there were things to change the email and uh, JavaScript. What program? They didn't know. Can we easily yeah. share it? And so it's the page of Google Drive. Most of the kids are still, well, we're still working with mm. loops. And we've just gotten past functions. Well, we might be able to use the same background so information. Functions. Self -based. That would be preferable um, if we could. I've got one kid who's way ahead. He's in two conditions already, which is really good. Um, and I even told we just have to take out the part where it says you're going to make your own musical instrument. Because we have, like, it will show a field, and there's 20 spaces ahead, three wide. Mm -hmm. And as you walk, there are jewels. My first program in the one hour, it was only three program. Right. But then when I press play, the screen changed and it was ten. So oh, I need to account for the fact that always move forward. If there's a gym, go like gym. If Do you block, like this? Um, we'll have to edit a little because right. it talks about the instruments. Right. We'll have to come up with our own, if, you no. know, when creating your sound waves, remember so that frequency is directly related to sound. And if you use that blank template, um, they can pull it out from every station they need to. So they're really good to figure out if they're like snap. So they can pull out from the template. There we go. Yeah. Um, we have Okay, now that we yeah. have studied so frequency and how different nodes have different frequencies, yeah. you are going to make your own, you are going to code a program. Yeah. To code a program to show sound waves of different instruments. Maybe just showing the moments because by the time they would start the mission, 10 minutes from Sound is energy that moves through a medium when you are making your program, when you are coding your program. Your program. Yeah, coding. Yeah. Think, about making. Think about the different frequencies your instruments have. Yeah.
Frequency of sound is directly related to pitch. The more waves per second hitting your ear, the higher the pitch, the tone is. The higher in pitch the tone is, and the smaller the wavelength. I read it the same read. Okay. Does your does the sound your instrument makes? So do the sounds. Wait, how do we say it? Do the sounds your instruments make? The sounds your instruments make have higher light frequencies. Okay, let me grab my glass. Mm -hmm. instruments are louder, high amplitude, because you can compress the air to a greater extent. What does that mean? And oh, because they, because they can compress the air to a greater extent. Okay. So based on that, we're asking them to show frequency and compression on the, can you show? You show I feel like this is really a, a frequency kind of thing, right? Well, we want to focus on frequency. I think so. We don't even really need compression, okay. right? Is that what you're thinking? Oh, yeah. I'm, that's why I'm asking. Because I know there are, what, three things we talked about, frequency, compression, and one other. Sometimes, oh, and, and rarefaction, like compression, and then rarefaction is the spreading apart. Categories. Sometimes we hear pleasant noises, and sometimes we hear noises that do not sound so good. The sound waves for a pleasant sound and a noisy sound look very different. The pleasant sound wave is very smooth, while the noisy sound wave is rough. The noisy will actually, the noisy wave actually looks noisy, doesn't it? Do we need that? Yeah. I don't think so. Either. Is there anything else we need to tell them that we want them to focus on? Um, like, do we want to give them background knowledge on, like, instruments? Like, you know, wood instruments are typically higher pitched, or I don't know if that's true or not. I just made something up. Right. I'd have to Google it. <laughs> like, do we want to give them any kind of information about that to help gear their search? Maybe, or we could just leave Let it them, open? Yeah, we can leave it open, too. Now I'm wondering if we should have left in that thing. I didn't like how that was stated though about the compression of the air or something. We could restate it. Some instruments are louder, higher amplitude. I like that because they're gonna learn about frequency and amplitude. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you're right. It sounds weird. Well, compressional here yeah. refers to the wave itself. It's like oh, but there's compression. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So amplitude. So we definitely want to focus on amplitude. Refraction. Compression. I kept wanting to say re, and I, my eyes kept looking, and I'm like, but it's an A. Because what's crazy is that we also teach that refraction, like with light reflection. Ref refraction. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what my brain was thinking when I looked at it. I'm like, but it's not right. <laughs> so maybe we should put something in there about those two. Okay. Um, here you can see how molecules move in a left to right motion, causing the wave and the disturbance to move in the same direction. And some 
areas of the wave, the molecules get bunched together. This is called compression. But, no. Oh, what kind of wave? Oh, what does it look like on Is that a sound wave? Yeah, that's like a slinky. Okay. Um, okay, so to determine the wavelength of a sound, you measure from compression to compression. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they could show that. This is because the compressions and refractions that move through sound waves have different pressures. The compressions are, are areas of high pressure, while the refractions are areas of low pressure. I don't get that there. See, that's how I've always seen them. All waves, light and sound? Mm, I've never done light waves. I did sound waves when I taught in Florida in fourth grade. And they had to, like it was the the line and then the wave traveled up and down and they and we had old science books so it could have just been really bad old science books yeah. but like they had like the distance between the like the distance between here was one thing and then the height was one thing because mm -hmm. that would be like wavelength and mm -hmm. amplitude mm -hmm. um, but I don't I have first period planning but like I say you know I think uh, especially with the case of the because that's what I was picturing when I pictured them coding the waves, oh. which would be easier than, that's but if that's the correct way. Sometimes you see a graphical sound wave that looks like the, this is how you see, like, I think that's what we did with graph sound waves, we graph sound. This is different from the graph. Oh, this is different from the graph of the transverse wave. The peaks and valleys of this wave graph of this wave graph the changes in pressure that occur in the wave. From this graph we can determine the amplitude of the sound, which is like, is that the pitch? Yeah. The amplitude is the peak of a compression. the and the softness, one of the two. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying we couldn't do that, they could. As far as like maybe, I'm not sure how, but I'm sure they could. That's the kind of stuff I did. But again, we have really old textbooks. Wait, so what are there many challenges <laughs> We're looking at pitch. We, right now we just have frequency in there so far. We've talked about frequency, which is pitch. Oh, there, okay. I think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to refresh my memory. This is from the task. Graphing pitch. What do you do? Is there? I don't know. I want to see a visual. Where is the picture? <laughs> Where is your sample? Product. Gosh. Pitch graph. Okay. What you got for us? <laughs> Frequency is pitch, amplitude is loudness. You can always change that more the more advanced students are that. Yeah, because if you know, you're one, you're but um, there's. I don't want them to get confused I don't between like slinky waves and jumper waves. Maybe yeah. we need to rethink.
they should for this, they should really separately submit that. Account. But obviously, so like this, right. you know, transverse wave correlates yeah, with the mm -hmm. longitudinal. Yeah, right. I think the way I would like would it be confusing for them? Yeah. I almost feel like the top one's how it actually travels, and the bottom one is how they how like we, we graph it, it and show it. Okay. So, so the vibrations travel through the air, and like when they get closer together, that's when it's compression. Yes. Okay. And then the distance between those points of compression. So we're still good. So we can still teach them that, and then in there. Maybe this coding, is just that's what they need to show us. This should be our picture on our Yes, it should. Thing or Bob. It actually makes me easier to understand. If you it's have the, this, the then air molecules and then the wave diagram. Okay. And okay. we want them to create the wave diagram. Actually they could probably draw that the air molecules to correspond with your diagram. Right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. the Where is our yeah, they need it <laughs> this is our new one? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay, no, this isn't what I want to go. It's hurt. There's image gallery we click over. Oh. You might just have to delete that one and put a new one here. Where'd you save it? This is how, yeah, I would go this now. Okay, and I put it here. We're just going to focus on that shows frequency and amplitude, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to put something in there about amplitude. Because it does say in here, different characteristics such as frequency and amplitude will determine the pitch and loudness. What program are they using? I'm using Snap, like we used. Can we call it sound waves with snap? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was calling it. Yeah, we did this last time. We had people take a long time to change the costume. Yes. Those things, I think yeah. that's still valuable. I snap has an explanation going on. I agree. Which makes it even <laughs> more fun. <laughs> I was going to put it in, and then I was like, no, I'm just going to leave that off. <laughs> it's very funny. When your partner's like, yeah, put the exclamation point. It's technically supposed to be there. <laughs> is energy that moves through a medium. I'm wondering if we can then put sound waves um, have, or maybe we can say it more eloquently Characteristics. That, have characteristics like, and then we can include yes. our key words. Okay. Here it says, these waves have different characteristics such as frequency and amplitude. Can we steal it from the standards? Which determine oh, the properties of sound such as pitch and loudness. Such as with the frequency and amplitude. Uh -huh. <laughs> Comma. Which will determine the properties of sound. Mm -hmm. Such as pitch and loudness. Can we put like these are measured? 
I want to. These use, can be shown on a di a wave diagram or. Yeah, because I wanted to talk about like compression or faction. Like, aren't those the words we want to add into? Um, that one I got from down here when I talked specifically. This one specifically about sound. This um, one up here. Compare sound waves to light waves. Energy will cause and share these vibrations or carry through waves. I think I'll just continue. Uh, so sound waves have different characteristics such as frequency, amplitude, um, and then rarefaction. Yeah. And compression. How do you spell that? R A R E F A C T I O N. Mm -hmm. And period. These will determine the properties of sound. Okay. Okay. All right. What's our task? I think I already the next one. Choose yeah. two yeah. Or instruments. How do we say that? And we'll come back different sounds that have drastically different sounds. Or do we want to be specific? Like one has to be high pitch, one has to be low pitch. We just Let's just say, say different that sounds. Have different sounds. I like produce different sounds. That. Different sounds. Yeah, they're not. They got half. Yeah. Um, using the coding program Snap. Create wave diagrams showing the differences. Wave diagram. Please don't create wave diagrams. Easy. <laughs> create wave diagrams show, showing, because uh -huh. we already said using, showing the differences in the sound of the two instruments. Um, and that's in there somewhere. All right, you guys are What's up? What's this scenario? Okay. Oops, sorry. I'm sorry, this isn't supposed to be here. Yeah. Just this one sentence, right? Mm-hmm. And then making mm -hmm. right here. When you are making coding. It was making, then we tried. It was making an instrument, so we changed it to coding. Okay. Show you the criteria that we came up with. We try to keep it at just five that we thought could apply to. What they're going to have to do. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll type it up a little differently. Like once you guys send me that, then, or I could send you this and if you want, you can add that in. Um, but the ideas I was thinking was uh, first, Sprite is used on screen to perform a task and it's customized. That'll mm -hmm. be your instruments on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, code is written efficiently without any unneeded mm -hmm. blocks. So just no excess, no waste. Mm -hmm. um, code contains three or more different categories of block type. Nice. So we were mm -hmm. thinking about on a basic level drawing a house. You need control, mm -hmm. you need pin, mm -hmm. you need motion, mm -hmm. having at least three. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, any more is good to go. Um, three or less bugs submitted within the final code. Um, sometimes the code will work with bugs. And you can decide as teachers what you want to do. Like, you know, mm -hmm. even though it contains bugs, it still technically work. But then again, that can fall into the category of efficiency. Mm -hmm. right? You can take it off so, there. Yeah, you can. This depends on how you want to grade that. The final code was submitted as an XML file. Um, so we were talking about it and what I'm going to have to do to create some of the challenges that your kids will do in the beginning. I'll make one or two for next time. I'll show you how I made it and share it with you. Mm -hmm. And then you can start to like make your own mm -hmm. based on what you want your kids to do. Um, but in SNAP, when you export your project, mm -hmm. it'll be as an XML file in our downloads folder. What we did in the past when we worked, because the four of us this summer were together, we just put it in Google Drive, mm -hmm. and then we all downloaded it, and we were able to work on our different components then, because we each had a different code that we were working on, and we just emailed each other's code, or Google Drive each other's code to one another. 
but that's how the kids can submit it to you to keep a just a little library of their mm -hmm. work. Okay. Um, the code itself, I think, should be submitted two ways. One, you should actually get the project, the code itself, that you can use in SNAP. But second, it should also be submitted as a picture, screenshot, that is however you want. Now, for me, I would use Google Drive. I would create a folder and say, okay, this is a shared folder for everybody. Name the file your name or your group's name mm -hmm. and drop that code in. That way, when they get ready for the little gallery walk thing, they can pull up the picture mm -hmm. and they can have the project running. Mm -hmm. And it won't matter what computer you use. Now, how does Snap work on iPads? Okay. Or are we going to have to get Chromebook carts? I would try to use uh, the carts. Okay. I would, what I'm going to do is when we look at the timetable when we want to start and if we're going to use Wednesdays and if we already know what Wednesdays they are, as you said, like three a month, um, I'll go ahead and go to French and say, hey, the Wednesday, Wednesday, we need it. Right. Um, have, well, even if it's just during event time, they can send someone to pick it up and take it somewhere else after yeah. event time. Yeah. I have my cart um, indefinitely. I was say, you always have my <laughs> Now, the so SNAP will work fine on the iPads. Mm -hmm. It's not as user friendly. Not as easy. And as a teacher, okay. I'd rather for them to have computers. Okay. Um, so we'll do that. And that should make the submission and everything fine. easier, too. Here's what we're going to have to remember, though. They. We need to show them how to save. How to save, 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 save. Um, the way that I showed you, if I'm not mistaken, when you sign in, it takes you to NC State, and you have to put in your initials and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we could. Okay, that. so there's a different one that I might use to cut that out. We'll still have to create an account, but we won't have to sign in through state. The reason we sign in through state is they track our data, right? But for this, they don't need to track all the kids. So we can just go to Berkeley's version of SNAP, mm -hmm. and you can still do this now. You can sign in with the account you made, because Berkeley's and NC State's are connected, just right off a different server, but it's still in the same cloud. All right. So we would just let the kids have to sign in that one time, not mm -hmm. the NC State than the other. Um, and we might have, in the beginning, what I'm going to have to do is say I make a file for them to practice on. I'll make it and share it in a Google Drive folder for both of you two. Then you two make your own copy of it. That way you can distribute out to your kids. Mm -hmm. And when your kids download it from Google Drive to their computer, then they can get in and they can start manipulating in there, right? Um, and then once they save it to their account, it's always in their account. Mm -hmm. and they'll always have that, um, you know, Kessler practice day two, um, Stahl's practice day whatever, whatever we decide to call it. So yeah, I feel like today was helpful to be able to sit down and That's look right ahead time. and plan. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And especially like if you've never had to write a mini challenge before, just looking at the way it's set up, because I know it helps a lot to have somebody who's done there with you. So this criteria, would we put that under additional? Let's go right here. And what we would just do oh, is go right. ahead and add a second component. So we would have criteria for success, um, science, sixth grade science, criteria for success of coding. And it would just be a total of, instead of MET 5, it would be a MET 10. You know, we it just cut everything just extend up. it. Yeah. I understand. And then this, that way they make sure it's two, you're graded on two separate things because I know, let me see, so it's going to be a challenge. So you still probably want to keep those things, mm -hmm. some of those things for your mini challenge purposes or change it for your content. Mm -hmm. um, because some kid might have a bug that they understood exactly what amplitude and frequency meant, you know? Mm -hmm. So they kind of get... Could the they, we give it two grades for them? Like they have two rubrics, one for coding, one for science? It's could count it as two grades? Yeah. Let's see how... I guess my initial thought was, let's see how they do with like our Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And if... Uh, they don't catch on as quickly as we think, then we can do two totally separate, maybe. Yeah, it could or be whatever. A, it could also be where you present it as two separate or, or all together, however, but when you get there and you actually say, okay, they weren't ready for this, mm -hmm. then you just kick all my criteria to the side and look at it strictly from the content standpoint. Because 
just because a product is poor with something that they're trying new, mm -hmm. they shouldn't lose credit for that. That's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, that wouldn't be fair to me, even if I were doing it in my class. Yeah. I would just say, all right, you know, they tried. Next time now, we'll kick the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it sounds pretty good. If we could get this started by, well, we meet again in like two weeks. So mm -hmm. what I was thinking is by that time, we'll get together and we'll kind of lay out like, okay, these are the next nine days, mm -hmm. dates that we're meeting with our kids. This is what we want to do in these days. Mm -hmm. Let's lay that out from the date that we need to have this done. Let's start and go backwards. Mm -hmm. Then we'll see how many sessions we're going to plan for, and we could get started as soon as you're ready, okay. as long as we've got a game plan of how we want to go. Because yeah. the ending's already going to be done, It's the and we'll have the beginning part done. Uh, we'll do that next time we get together. Then we'll get the middle fleshed out between now and then. That'll be So the rest of the time we meet this year is going to be focused on strictly how can I support you guys to make it happen. And if you need me to work and, and, and make a component for you, I can do that. Hmm. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, if mm -hmm. you want to let me stay as long as you want, but I'm going to shut that off. And I would like to get a picture of each of you, if you don't want to.